Well, it's noon here in Lagos, Nigeria. Hello and welcome to Lunchtime Politics. I'm Kyodo Okikulu. First, the highlights. It's a more sticky situation for the national chairman of the APC and former Kano governor Abdullah Ganduji as the Kano Anti-Graft Agency says it has fresh charges of corruption and maladministration against him. That's coming amidst purported suspension by his APC ward executives. And Abdullah Isule, a Sinasara state governor, takes drastic security decisions as he bans ethnic vigilante groups in the state, asks them to hand over uniforms and weapons to the commissioner of police within two weeks. And four days to have governorship election uh, party primaries in Ondo State. The candidates step up their campaigns at the grassroots and we take a look at their strategy and the promises made. Well, let's get started, shall we? It appears as though there's some more troubles for former Kano State Governor Abdullahi Ganduje, the old same, as now the anti-graft agency of the state that's the Kano State Anti-Corruption and Public Complaints Commission says it has filed fresh charges of corruption and maladministration against him. Well, according to the chairman of the state's anti-graft agency, Mr. Muhui Magaji, the commission is investigating an alleged case in which 51 billion naira local government funds were directly taken from the government coffers and sent to individuals, as well as, well as an alleged 4 billion naira sent from the consolidated revenue account of Kano State to an agricultural company. Uh, Mr. Mohoyi uh, was speaking on our breakfast program, Sunrise Daily. A federal offense, we charge, is about eight count charges. So the eight count charges is all bordered on allegation of uh, corruption that has to do with the state law. And it may interest you to know that before he sued us, he was able to, you know, in our own uh, painting, use state resources, 240 million naira to sue the EFCC, the same EFCC that he was, uh, perhaps, the camera saying uh, that they are... The you appropriate. verified that it was state resources? Yes, we verified. In fact, it will not even go on punished because what is happening now is a tip of the iceberg. As I'm talking to you, we are investigating a case whereby 51.3 billion naira local government funds were directly taken from the government coffers, sent to other individuals, and we trust it to people. So we are, and this is not only the case, the case that we have piled. We have piled a series of cases. And anybody that wanted to carry his cross, because uh, we have the case whereby one billionaire in April last year was removed from government court coppers on the, under the pressures of uh, renovating 30 roads in the metropolis, and it was taken away. Then to be the change. We have a case whereby 430 million, all these cases are before the court. We have a case of 4 billion naira, whereby it was sent from consolidated revenue account of Kano State to uh, an agricultural uh, a company. And back to what you said that, uh, yes, my hand, yes, that is the beauty of what we are doing. In Nigeria, we're not supposed to have scapegoats. We're not supposed to have those that, uh, that will be shielded. Oh, there you go. That's the state's anti-graft boss saying that the former governor has uh, more case to answer. And this appears to be just another page uh, or another chapter in the controversy surrounding Mr. Ganduje, who is expected to be arraigned by the Kano High Court tomorrow on charges bordering on allegations of bribery, diversion and misappropriation of funds, including the purported acceptance of 413 thousand dollars and 1.38 billion naira in bribes but that's not all there's also the controversy around his membership of the party well, he had been suspended by those members you see uh, members of his uh, ward in Dawakin Tofa local government area of the state and well that group the executive council of Ganduje ward led by one Haruna Gwanjo announced uh, the suspension during a press briefing now you see uh, the names of those uh, who appended their signature uh, to that decision. And Mr. Guanjo, who led the, t the, the group, explained that the former governor has to clear his name regarding the corruption allegations against him by the Kano state government. Today, on the 15th of April, 2024, 
We, the leaders of the APC in Ganduja Ward, they are working to power local government, engage in thorough deliberation, and subsequently decided to suspend the erstwhile governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, in light of the allegation of bribery involving foreign currency. It has come to our attention that Ganduji has been summoned to court to answer for these accusations. A development that we believe could potentially besmirch the reputation of our esteemed political party. This resolution was reached collectively on behalf of all executive members of the APC in Ganduja Ward, Dewa Kintupa, local government, Kano State. So that was a group that had some party members, perhaps executives, there. But on the flip side, the Genduje Ward Executive Committee members and Dawa Kintofa Local Government Executive Committee members denounced the suspension of uh, Mr. Genduje uh, from the APC. And uh, the Genduje Ward Chairman, Ahmed Koko, says those who addressed the press conference which he saw were sponsored by the NNPP government of the state and are not card-carrying members uh, of the APC, although uh, two of them are said to be executives uh, who have now been suspended uh, according to the party at the state level. But they're essentially saying that the suspension is null and void and they even threaten to take this to the courts. So it's a lot playing out uh, around Mr. Ganduje the APC in Kano State, and even the NNPP has been dragged into all of this. So let's get some more insight on the program this afternoon as we are joined right now live from our Kano studio by Mr. Shehu Megeri, who's the Deputy State Chairman of APC. Uh, welcome uh, to Lunchtime Politics, Mr. Megeri. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, there's a lot playing out, really, and a lot of people would naturally say, we should have gone past all of this. You have a group uh, saying they have suspended Mr. Ganduje, uh, another group of executives saying, well, he's not been suspended. Uh, we suspended the people you saw there. Two of them have since been sus suspended. But I imagine that overnight, some meetings have taken place, some conversations have happened. So can you give us the situation of things right now, coming off all of those deliberations uh, that you've had over the past couple of hours? Well, um, actually, to tell you the fact, those who paraded themselves and claim to be the leaders of APC at Kanduja Ward are not card carrying members of APC. The only, the only, they were sponsored by an NPP led administration to go and did what they have done. When we heard about the issue yesterday, we quickly gathered ourselves, call everybody that has a role to play as far as APC Kano State chapter is concerned, and we realized that those who paraded themselves and even claim to have suspended our national chairman are not card carrying members of APC. They are NNPP members. They were sponsored by NNPP led administration to execute that atrocities. So, as at yesterday, we call all the APC executive Pranganduji Wards, as well as those Prandawakin Topa local government. They had a press conference where they told everybody that they were not part of what happened yesterday. They even mentioned the name of those. They mentioned the names of those who executed that atrocities saying that they were not our members, they are not our members, and I don't know how somebody from a different party will come and execute something in another party. FEC as a party is guided 
by a standard constitution with rules and regulations governing the party. So even if you are a member of that party, you cannot do something that you are not supposed to do. For example, if you are not a leader, you cannot, you cannot behave like a leader. You cannot right. go and tell somebody that you can do this and can do that. Just for example, like a state governor, can somebody, can members of the public gather themselves and remove the state governor? That is the issue of concern with the state assembly. Well, Mr. McGarry... Even a state, in the state assembly, there are right. some constitutional requirements. All right, Mr. McGarry... Without fulfilling that constitutional requirement, constitutional requirement it, will not, it will never be done. All right, Mr. Maigari, if you can hear me, so, uh, I just want to yes. get this clear. So it was reported that the chairman of your party, uh, Mr. Abdullahi Abbas, also announced the suspension of the ward executives, that's the Ganduja ward executives, for six months. Is that correct? No, it's not correct. So what is the true state of things? Yesterday, we were with all those Yesterday, we were with the bona fide, we were together with the members or the executive of that particular ward, where they had a press conference and they disassociated themselves with what really happened over there. So Abdullah Abbas, being the state, the, the, uh, the chairman of the party in Kano, does not expel or suspend the Ganduji Awards Executive. We were with them, to, we were together with them, and they even had a press conference yesterday. All right. So this group that said they've suspended uh, Mr. Ganduji, um, they, they, they based their decision on this. They said that he has to clear his name regarding the corruption allegations against him by the Kano State Government. And it, it's quite a lot, really. And I know that your party has said, well, you stand for the truth, and you're a party that is there to fight corruption. And you've said these things time and again. So for the purpose of that, do you align with that group that, well, Mr. Ganduje should clear his name if the state government says he has a case to answer? Well, that is a calculated attempt by the NNPP-led administration to bring down Ganduji. They want to see the downfall of Abdullah Umar Ganduji. That's why they are doing this and that, this and that, in order to make sure that his image is tarnished. How do, how do you mean? Because uh, we had the head of the anti graft agency, who, by the way, had been appointed by Mr. Ganduji at some point then suspended and the court reinstated him. And he spoke about these allegations, quite weighty allegations, and it concerns the government's purse, the money for the Kano people. Uh, so, I mean, if those allegations are there, he's innocent until proven guilty. So why not clear his name if indeed he's innocent? Well, they have been framing a lot of false allegations. They have been doing it and still been. So that anti graft agency chairman, that is Mohima Gaji, is entitled to his own opinion. He is being teleguided by the state government or by the NNPP-led administration in order to see the downfall of Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduja nationwide. So let me go through some of those allegations just to uh, present them to you. They, so they essentially border uh, on bribery, diversion, and misappropriation of funds. And it includes uh, the purported acceptance of $413,000 and 1.38 billion naira in bribes. And just uh, this morning, he also spoke uh, about certain monies that were diverted uh, from the state government's uh, coffers. Let me just walk you through. 51.3 billion naira local government funds directly taken from government coffers and sent to individuals, allegedly. 
uh, 4 billion naira allegedly sent from the consolidated revenue account of Kano State to an agricultural company. Is it that these allegations are not weighty enough to at least even give it some attention? Well, as far as I am concerned, I have been in the leadership of APC in Kano for at least six years. I know how the governor, the former governor of Kano, developed Kano State more than any governor before. So, for you to t ask me about misappropriation or money laundering or anything of this nature, I think I cannot answer this question because, as all I know about Ganduje, he performs creditably and nobody performs more than him as far as Kano State is concerned. I am a living witness, and if you like, come to Kano, we can show you whatever he did for the, throughout his two tenures as a governor of Kano State. We have things are here visibly to be seen. So for somebody to come and start making noise, creating premise, some false allegations, here and there about Ganduji, I think this is a mere political victimization. Mm. They want Ganduji to be persecuted. They, want, they are trying to persecute him or persecute all APC members. They feel that is the only way they can achieve their target. But I think this is not politics. This is a barbaric behavior. This okay, is not politics. Right, two more issues, uh, because he's expected to be arraigned by the Kano High Court tomorrow on those charges. Uh, if you were in a position to advise him, especially because this has now blown uh, to a much bigger proportion, uh, would you be advising him to, I mean, be at the court, because this is a court's case, or totally ignore that because you say you believe that this is a, a barbaric and the rest? Well... As I have told you earlier, I know what Governor Ganduji did for the progressive advancement and functional improvement of Kano as a state. Go to any other state. You cannot compare any other state with the Kano. And it was Dr. Abdullah Umar Ganduji that did all what he did to make Kano what it is now. So for somebody to think that they can do and undo they can victimize Ganduji. They can dent the image of Abdullah Umar Ganduji here in Kano. I think I'm sure they will never succeed. We are with the Ganduji. People of Kano State are with the Ganduji, and they will continue to be with the Ganduji. So we know that um, at the heart of this is, um, I mean, some conflict that dates years and ten years ago. If you say that the NNPP is responsible for this. Uh, you know that the NNPP, the national leader of the NNPP, uh, Mr. Conquesso, a former governor as well. They had worked together, but they eventually uh, fell out. And we've seen the president uh, meeting with both of them at different times. There were some words uttered, uh, you know, the former governor, Kenduji, saying, you know, could have almost even uh, slapped him if he was there. But he said so. I've said that in a jocular manner. Uh, so speak to us about how to resolve this, because there's governance in Kano State also at stake. There's a development of Kano State at stake, and if you keep having these back and forths, it will definitely harm a development. So do you expect the presidents to maybe wade into this as well, because we know that at the heart of it are the heavyweights, former Governor Kwankwaso, former Governor Genduje, and maybe have something like we had in River State, the Rivers Accord. Is that something that you would also look forward to? Well, uh, Mr. President, in his wisdom, wants all the politicians in Kano to unite in order to work towards the progress of Kano, state as a state, and to work for the progress of people of Kano state. But as far as this situation, is now coming to this. I'm sure if care is taken, Mr. President may not necessarily achieve his aim. Because you are going with Kano, our politicians here in Kano, 
the leaders are going parallelly. And you know, in mathematics, when we talk of parallel lines, even if you prolong them from here to China, they will never meet. So that is what I'm saying as far as I'm concerned. This is my own opinion, and I'm entitled to my own opinion. But Mr. President, once see Kano state as a United State, that's why a lot of things happened in the past, which I'm not ready to mention everything here right now. But I'm sure if care is not taken, the worst will continue to be happening. So are you saying the president should uh, support Mr. Ganduje fully and uh, well, maybe well, not be on the side of the NNPP? Because some have also said that uh, it looks like the president has a relationship with both of them, and that's why this is festering. So you want the president to declare full support for Mr. Ganduje, who is the chairman, the national party, uh, the national chairman of his party, and not for uh, Mr. Kokwaso, who belongs to another party entirely, the NNPP. Is that what you're uh, suggesting? Of course, yes. Mr. We expect Mr. President to be with the Ganduji 100%, because Ganduji is with Mr. President 100%. We know how Mr. Ganduji struggle, try at his own level to make sure that the Mr. President becomes what he is right now. Everybody knows we are the living witness, we are his supporters, we are the living witness, we know what he did. So one good turn deserves another. Ganduje is a true supporter of Mr. President, is a true loyalist of Mr. President, and we expect Mr. President to return good with good. That is what, is what we expect. Like, for example, when Mr. President was going for the campaign activities here and there from one state to another, they were all together with Ganduje. And at that moment, the NPP leader, that is Mr. Kwankwasu, was the one castigating Mr. President, telling people that he is incapacitated, telling everybody that he is incapacitated. We have the audio, we have the video, everybody knows. So why should he come now to sneak behind and told Mr. President that he wants to be with him? Let me tell you, let everybody think on the right direction. Once together, always together. Ganduje is for Mr. President, and we want Mr. President to be with Ganduje 100%. Right. For, honestly speaking, we are in politics, we are doing politics, we are, and it is supposed to be politics without bitterness. All right. Well, Mr. Maigari, uh, what a way you have put it, really, casting, uh, you know, people's minds back to, you know, the campaign period and the work that was done. But we'll wait to see what happens tomorrow, uh, if Mr. Ganduje will be in court, uh, where he's expected to be arraigned. Uh, that's at the Kano High Court. But we'd like to thank you so much. We've been speaking with Mr. Shehu Magari, who is a Deputy State Chairman of the All Progressives Congress in Kano State. Thank you so much uh, for your time on the program. You are highly welcome. Thank you so much, too. Well, while we see how that develops, the coming hours will definitely be vital. Let's turn our attention uh, to Nasarawa State. And the conversation is around security. Governor Abdullahi Suleh has prescribed all ethnic vigilante groups operating in the state. And this is a decision said to have been taken after an expanded Security Council meeting presided by uh, the governor. He equally directed the ethnic vigilante groups affected by the order to hand over their uniforms and weapons to the State Commissioner of Police within uh, two weeks. And just give you uh, an insight into why this was done, cited the powers vested in him via Section 970 of the Penal Code, as well as other relevant laws vested on him, and says it was acting on the advice of the State Security Council banning the Fulani ethnic vigilante group known as the Kungia Zaman Lafia Basa vigilante group, as well as the Egon vigilante group. Vigilante group is hereby proscribed. However, the council also resolved that other vigilante groups will be vetted. 
and screen. And this will involve the chairman of the local government, traditional rulers, and security personnel to ensure that these vigilante groups work for the interests of the state, not necessarily based on your ethnic group. In addition, all the ethnic groups, wherever this vigilante group be formed, all the ethnic groups will be involved. Let's come over to the Southwest, where there's a lot of preparations ahead of the All Progressive Congress's governorship primary in Ondo State this Saturday. And Governor Lucky Ayodatiwa has taken his campaign tour to Akura North and Idoran local government areas of the state. And according to him, the overwhelming turnout of supporters to his statewide local government tour is a pointer to, his, uh, to the acceptability of his candidacy by all in the party. And he says he's confident that the people uh, will turn out en masse on April the 20th to cast their votes for him. Meanwhile, another APC governorship aspirant, Senator Jimo Ibrahim, says he is also confident of winning the party's ticket in Saturday's primary election. So Ibrahim stated this while fielding questions from Channels Television in Okakoko, which is the headquarters of Akoko Southwest uh, local government area, as all of the aspirants uh, now prepare for the primaries on Saturday. Uh, so with Channels Television, as we bring you all of the updates coming from uh, Ondo State in the build-up to the primaries. But let's head over to neighboring Edo State. And it's in Benin City, the state capital, uh, where the camp of a former deputy governor, Philip Shaibu, has been reacting to the demolition of a security post situated at his residence. Spokesperson of the impeached deputy governor, Mr. Robert Ejelen, recounts the event, uh, which he says he witnessed. And this is uh, yet another a chapter in all of the back and forth. But the Edo State government sees nothing wrong with the demolition. As a Commissioner for Information, Mr. Chris Nehikari told Channels Television that the impeached deputy governor, by virtue of his removal, has lost such privileges attached to his office. Well, that's politics for you. Always a new development and I bet you they're always intriguing. So stay with us right here on Channels Television. We'll bring you all of the breaking news from politics to the economy and so much more. Well, that's the program for this afternoon. I'm Kaido Vikili. Thank you for watching. Good luck.